Hi guys, so the trade war between China and the United States is escalating into a currency war and obviously this is something we watch for because we are pretty confident that the um, financial system is going to collapse in some way. Um, it's already been um, kind of set up to do so. Um, a precursor to that was the fall of the stock market um, by 666 points, which I see as a precursor to the events that are going to happen um, in association with the stock market later on this year. Um, obviously, that coincides with the Economist magazine suggesting we'll have um, a new currency or moving to a new currency um, by 2018, which is obviously this year. So the trade war raging between China and the United States shows signs of spilling over into a battle of the currency after Beijing's central bank devalued its yuan against the dollar. The People's Bank of China dropped the dollar's reference rate to 6.7671 yuan, the most radical weakening excuse me, of the currency in two years. A cheaper yuan will make Chinese exports less expensive and has the potential to boost sales overseas. The move came just hours after President Donald Trump threatened to slap tariffs of $500 billion worth of Chinese goods on Chinese worth of goods. Sorry. Mr. Trump has previously accused China of manipulating its currency to gain an unfair advantage over American businesses, a message he reiterated via Twitter yesterday. Analysts have warned the devaluation of the yuan could be the first signs the ongoing trade war is descending into a currency war. It's starting to smell like it. we've had a trade war that's, going, that's been going on for a while, and now we're starting to hear talk about you shouldn't be doing that with your currency. China's central bank is responsible for setting a daily exchange rate for the yuan, and while the currency has been weakening in recent weeks, Thursday's sharp adjustment appeared to be a deliberate move. Clearly, the currency moving this fast negates the tariffs. So from that perspective, it's pretty understandable that Trump doesn't like what he's seeing. So there we have more movement towards the collapse of the dollar um, and the boosting of the yuan. They've already positioned themselves in terms of oil, ready for countries to switch over for trading oil in the yuan or even in the euro but a lot of countries are moving away from the dollar so you know we'll keep an eye on that but you know combined with everything else it puts a pretty hefty strain on the stock market and then while we're watching that we're watching the middle east as well um potential major escalation coming up on july 27th so when you hear benjamin netanyahu saying Israel will move against Iran in Syria. Um, it should make you pay attention. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu stressed to Russian President Vladimir Putin that Tel Aviv is to take action against Iran's presence in Syria. This comes as reports revealed that the Syrian opposition has evacuated the areas near to the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights, allowing for the redevelop redeployment of Syrian regime forces. In a written statement, Netanyahu's office said the PM spoke with President Putin today and discussed the regional developments in Syria with him. The statement added Netanyahu stressed that Israel will continue moving against the military repositioning of the Iranians in Syria. Netanyahu has repeated these remarks on numerous occasions in recent months, including during his meeting with President Putin in Moscow last week. Following a meeting between US President Donald Trump and Putin earlier this month, the American Premier said creating safety for Israel is something that both President Putin and I would like to see very much. So that would have been more than over the last couple of months, keeping an eye on the escalation and the events going on in Syria, how Syria has pretty much taken back most of its country, um, is approaching the Golan Heights where Israel is, you know, currently stationed, um, and the fact that we've had reports of um, Iran possibly having 80,000 Shiite fighters in Syria ready to go, um, it makes the fact that Syria is approaching the Golan Heights even more treacherous um, because obviously, as you can see, Israel believes that Iran is... Um, positioning itself in Syria to strike against Israel. Um, when you look at the map of Israel, Israel is a very tiny country. You've got um, Syria and the potential Iranian militias to its north and to its south. You've got the Gaza border with Hezbollah. So they're kind of being caught between two vices um, and they're being squeezed. So in that sense, you can sort of understand where they're lashing out. Obviously, um, I feel, especially when it comes to the Gaza border, things could be done differently, um, especially with the influence and power that Israel has. I'm sure there's other ways of, you know, deterring these uh, potential terrorist attacks um, without, you know, shooting civilians, um, because inevitably civilians do get caught up in wars between people that, you know, are 
looking to destroy one another. So keep an eye on Israel there, potentially 27th. That may happen if Iran goes ahead and blocks the Straits of Hormuz, which is being talked about even more in the news now. So this is July 22nd, today's report. Iran's Rouhani warns Trump about mother of all wars. Iran President Hassan Rouhani on Sunday cautioned the United States President Donald Trump about pursuing hostile policies against Iran, saying America should know war with Iran is the mother of all wars, wars, but he did not rule out peace between the two countries either. Iran faces increased US pressure and looming sanctions after Trump's decision to withdraw the United States from a 2015 international deal over Iran's nuclear program. Addressing the gathering of Iranian diplomats, Rouhani said, Mr. Trump, don't play with the lion's tail. This would only lead to regret, the state news agency reported. Now that, I just want to quickly stop there for a second, because um, don't play with the lion's tail just reminds me of the Catch a Tiger by its tail video I did in reference to North Korea and a tiger that is on the girl's back in the iPad Goat 2 video. Um, how the, her belt, which is red, appears to go across the tiger's tail, which just gave me the reference of catching a tiger by the tail. You better not let go, otherwise there's going to be some trouble. Um, and then we've got another reference to um, a, a large cat's tail being played with in reference to a lion. So you've got the tiger in terms of North Korea, you've got the lion in terms of Iran. Both of them seem to have a suggestion with uh, catching them by the tail or playing with their tail, which um, you know can result in something pretty catastrophic if you don't hold on. So um, what he went on to say is America should know that peace with Iran is the mother of all peace and war with Iran is the mother of all wars leaving open the possibility of peace between the two countries, which have been at odds since the 1979 Islamic Revolution. You are not in a position to incite the Iranian nation against Iran's security and interests, Rouhani said, in, in an apparent reference to reported efforts by Washington to destabilize Iran's Islamic government. In Washington, U.S. officials familiar with the matter told Reuters that the Trump administration has launched an offensive of speeches and online communications meant to foment unrest and help pressure Iran to end its nuclear program and its support of militant groups. Current and former US officials said the campaign paints Iran leaders in a harsh light, at times using information that is exaggerated or contradicts other official pronouncements, including comments by previous administrations. Anyone who understands the rudiments of politics doesn't say we will stop Iran's oil exports. We have been the guarantor of the regional waterway security throughout history, Rouhani said. Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei on Saturday back to Rouhani's suggestion that Iran may block Gulf oil exports if its own exports are halted. So between now, the 22nd and 27th, that's just five days, we're looking out for a escalation in this situation with Iran um, in terms of its oil. If America pressures other countries to stop buying um, oil from Iran, then Iran, they threaten, they may not, but they could go ahead and block the Straits of Hormuz. Um, and then that would obviously lead into the war that I talked about in reference to IPEC Go To and how that may all connect on July 27th. But we've got five days to watch the situation to see if it devolves into a, a place where blocking the Straits of Hormuz would become more, more of a reality. So, you guys, that's the end of my report. Just wanted to bring those couple of things to you. Looking out for the trade war, currency war now between China and the United States, devaluing the dollar, Israel preparing to move against Iran in Syria and possibly Iran directly if that escalates even further, and Iran possibly blocking the Straits of Hormuz, um, leading to war over oil. So three potential uh, situations where war could evolve from, um, as well as the other things we talked about. So you guys have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and may the Heavenly Father bless you.